So this is a man who was attacked on a New York subway. And there were two NYPD police officers who went into another part of the actual subway train and hid. Your tax dollars at work. You were very brave. Because they believed the guy had a gun, but he had a knife. And there was reports of this person having a knife. There was never a report of this person having a gun. And the cops didn't help this person. Your tax dollars at work. A man who was brutally stabbed by Brooklyn subway slasher Moxim Gelman two years ago had his negligence case against the city dismissed in court yesterday, despite the fact that two transit officers had locked themselves in a motorman's car only a few feet away from him at the time of the attack. Oh, that's your tax dollars at work. So basically, police in the U.S. and U.S. law enforcement in general General have no constitutional duty to protect you. Then what's the point? They have no duty to protect you. And I want you to see this. Gelman stabbed Joseph Lozito in the face, neck, and hands and head on an Uptown 3 train in February of 2011 after fatally stabbing four people and injuring three others in a 28-hour period. Lozito, a father of two and an avid martial arts fan, was able to tackle Gelman and hold him down and Gelman was eventually arrested by the transit officers. Lozito sued the city, arguing that the police officers had locked themselves in the conduct car and failed to come to his aid at the time. The city, meanwhile, claimed that the NYPD had no special duty to intervene at the time. Useless. Bacon. Pig, oink, oink. and that they were in the motorman's car because they believed Gelman had a gun and Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Margaret Chan has sided with the city noting that there is no evidence that the cop was aware Lozito was in danger at the time. That's bullshit. Stop lying. Chan did, however, note the heroism of Lozito's actions. The dismissal of this lawsuit does not lessen Mr. Lozito's bravery or the pain of his injuries, she wrote in her decision yesterday. Mr. Lozito heroically maneuvered the knife away from Gelman and subdued him on the subway floor. Gelman was sentenced to 200 years in prison in January of 2012. He was sentenced to an additional 25 years for Lazito stabbing the following month. And I'm going to point something out to you. The cops were well aware. They saw the guy going around stabbing people and they hid in a subway car. They have no special duty to protect people. I want you to see this. Police have no duty to protect people citizens. A lot of people don't know this. Fine law. I want to go to an actual law site here. Do the police have an obligation to protect you? I want you to see this. Uvalde, Texas School District Police Department has received withering criticism for his failure to stop a school gunman who shot and took out 19 people. While the shooter was inside the two adjoining classrooms, 19 law enforcement officials, 19 cops, 19 pigs, stood outside for nearly an hour as they waited for technical equipment to arrive. Questions of police duty. The motto to protect and serve first coined by LAPD in the 1950s has widely been copied by police departments everywhere. But what exactly is a police officer's legal obligation to protect people? Must they risk their lives in dangerous situations like the one in Uvalde? The answer is no. I want to say that again. Must they risk their lives in dangerous situations like the one in Uvalde? The answer is no. Your tax dollars at work. Police have no legal obligation to protect you or your children. It is codified in law. It has been decided by the U.S. Supreme Court several times. We're going to get into the cases here. In 1981, case Warren v. District of Columbia, the D.C. Court of Appeals held that police have a general public duty, but that no special legal duty exists unless there is a special relationship between an officer and an individual such as a person in custody. So, therefore, police can watch you burn inside of a house and guess what they're protected a lot of people don't know that the u.s supreme court has also ruled that police have no specific obligation to protect in its 1989 decision in the shaney v winnebago county department of social services the justices ruled that a social services department had no duty to protect a young boy from his abusive father in 2005's castle rock v gonzalez a woman sued the police for failing to protect her from her husband husband after he violated a restraining order and abducted and unalived their three children. Justices said the police had no such duty. Most recently, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit upheld a lower court ruling that police could not be held liable for failing to protect students in the 2008 shooting that claimed 17 lives at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. That is in 2018. Your tax dollars at work. You're completely useless. So let's look over here. One, two, Fine law is going ham on them. So the next time 
you see a police car roll by with to protect and serve emblazoned on the door. Keep in mind, they have no constitutional duty or constitutional obligation to do that. If you need the police to protect you, all you can do is hope they will.